Coming up in this week's video, we've got a bounty hunting goose on the loose. We've got an adorable cosy life sim, which some are calling the PC's answer to Animal Crossing. And we also have a romantic metal detecting game set in the beautiful English countryside. Hi guys and welcome to I Love Indies. Today we're showcasing some of the great new indie games released in the first week of June 2021. To keep up to date with all things indie gaming, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to get notifications so you never miss a video. Feel free to comment below on which of the featured indies most interest you and don't forget to click the like button if you enjoy the video. It all helps feed the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> <clears throat> Getting a surprise release this week is Overboard, a new game by Inkle Studios, the company who made Heaven's Vault, Pendragon and 80 Days. And like 80 Days, Overboard is a piece of interactive fiction. It's a murder mystery with you as the murderer. Set in 1935 aboard a ship destined for New York, you play as the recently married Veronica Valenzi. At the start of the game, you push your husband Malcolm overboard for reasons initially unclear. And so begins a Groundhog Day narrative cycle where you have eight hours, game time, not real time, before the ship docks and Malcolm's whereabouts need to be explained. Gameplay takes the form of a choose your own adventure story. Played from a series of beautifully animated static frames, you always have multiple actions or dialogue options to choose from, and each decision brings with it consequences. The other NPCs on board remember what you say and how you act, and this all culminates in a final Hercule Poirot-esque scene where the Major gets his little grey cells working overtime to solve the crime, which will most likely involve you behind bars on arrival in New York. But there must be a way to escape scot-free, surely, and that's the crux of the game. After each indictment, you wake up back at the start with all your recent knowledge intact. Previous choices are highlighted in green to help you decide which narrative path to take this time. My first playthrough, for example, lasted about five minutes. I chose to take some sleeping pills, woke up hours later, and was immediately taken for interrogation. I expect to play through the game many times, as you learn what to say and do, who to speak to and when, as you try to secure your freedom, Malcolm's sizeable life insurance, and get away with murder. Overboard is clearly inspired by Agatha Christie novels and Alfred Hitchcock films, but it most reminded me of Double Indemnity, a 1940s film noir starring a scheming femme fatale who murders her husband by getting her lover to push him off a train to claim life insurance. It's a wonderfully inventive little game which I just can't wait to get back to. Overboard's out now on the PC via Steam and GOG, the Nintendo Switch, as well as iOS. Mighty Goose is a frenetic arcade run and gunner where you take control of the titular character on a bounty hunting quest to defeat the scourge of the galaxy, the evil Void King. The game features gorgeous pixel art, heavily reminiscent of 16-bit platformers from the 1990s, particularly shooters like Metal Slug and Gunstar Heroes. But perhaps Konami's Rocket Knight Adventures and its sequel Sparkster are the games more similar to Mighty Goose, primarily for the way they mix quirky anthropomorphic characters with technology and machinery. As you'd expect for a run and gun shooter, controls are super tight. You have a jump and dash to avoid incoming bullets, and shooting downwards helps slow your fall. Your standard form of attack is a pistol with unlimited bullets, but other more powerful weapons drop from defeating enemies, and these can include a machine gun, an electric ray, and even homing missiles. All of this makes handling the Void King's minions much more manageable. And a neat feature, something which never really gets explained through the tutorial, is that you can pause the game and request ammo drops, which you can do even during boss fights at the cost of in-run collectible coins. It's a subtle accessibility option that will help those not used to the difficulty of the genre. Mission start. To aid you further, you can visit the armory from the title screen to equip upgrades, such as a double jump and sprint boots. After rescuing characters in-game, you can enlist a companion, who a second player can control if you want to play the game co-op. But the feature that is going to please most people is the inclusion of a dedicated honk button which starts off as purely cosmetic, but later becomes a useful weapon against the enemy horde. 
with some fantastically creative level design, rideable mech vehicles, bosses as large as the screen, and some super dazzling explosive effects, Mighty Goose is a 90s throwback you're not going to want to miss. For those who grew up with a Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis, the game is an absolute must buy. It's out now on the PC via Steam and also the Nintendo Switch. Until We Die is a 2D side-scrolling adventure with tower defence elements. In a post-apocalyptic future, a meteorite has destroyed much of the planet and brought with it an alien life form intent on bringing about mankind's extinction. In the game, you play as Ivan and command a group of survivors who find refuge in an underground subway station. The game features a day-night cycle with the overall aim to survive 30 days. With each run, you start in the middle of the station and slowly start to attempt to expand outwards. Once you've established your base, you build barricades to defend yourself from the monstrous threat that lurks deep in the shadows and attacks in waves at night. The pixel art style is definitely one of the main draws of this game. It looks gorgeous and features superb character and enemy design. Controlling Ivan and his troops is really simple. Collect resources, use them to upgrade units, and prepare for the imminent storm. Enemies come from the east and the west, so you need to strategically set up your fortifications as you can't be in two places at once. Ivan is the only survivor armed with a machine gun, which somewhat helps to fend off small packs of creatures, but you'll need support as the days pass. Survivors can be assigned classes and then designated specific tasks. For example, engineers can fix damaged outposts, whilst diggers can destroy rubble to make the land buildable and also use the shovels to defend against the horde. Over time, units become more experienced and new classes become available. For those who don't play a lot of tower defense games, Until We Die is a super accessible entry into the genre. Resource management is not overwhelming, commanding troops is simple, and the 2D perspective means you're only ever defending two fronts. There's also no inventory management screens to have to navigate. Surviving 30 days is certainly a challenge. The game ends if your generator is destroyed or Ivan succumbs, but you'll make steady progress the more you play, and with each run you unlock new items. Plus, you'll want to see what mysteries lurk in the deeper recesses of the metro tunnels. With similarities to Kingdom New Lands, Aegis Defenders, and even Nintendo's Pikmin, Until We Die is an action strategy game definitely worth checking out. It's out now on the PC via Steam and due for release on the Nintendo Switch later in the year. For those who love Celeste and Super Meat Boy, the next great precision platform is here. Sunblaze is a mind-bending adventure starring Josie, a superhero in training. The game starts off with you practicing your moves in a digital training room, operated by your dad. Very quickly, the system goes rogue and attempts to trap you inside the program forever. There are over 700 one-screen levels to test your reflexes and your brain. It's not just a simple case of getting to the exit, you'll find yourself closely observing the screen to map out a possible route in your head. And like typical games of the genre, there's plenty of trial and error, but I do feel some players bring something unique to the table, what I'd like to call precision sequence platforming. Often, objects or platforms need to be interacted with to open a path forward. For example, hang on a damaged rail so that it drops and blocks a laser in front of you, or jump kill enemies in a specific order to get to the exit. It's surprising just how ingenious some of the levels are, especially when considering the compact size. And the ever-changing simulator room introduces new obstacles and mechanics in each chapter, which does keep gameplay fresh. As you'd expect with a game like this, death comes quickly and often. You're likely to die hundreds if not thousands of times in your attempts to complete all of the levels and escape the simulator. And certainly it's going to be more like the latter if you try to get all of the precariously placed collectibles scattered around the chapters. The instant restart after death makes putting the controller down difficult, and the impressive range of accessibility options makes this a game for anyone rather than just hardcore platform enthusiasts. If that's not enough, the developers have added a Zen mode, an alternative version of the game which features fewer levels and reduced difficulty. Sunblaze is another great precision platformer for 2021. The characters are charming, the graphics are gorgeous, and the soundtrack is ambient enough not to grate after trying a level for the hundredth time. Prepare to die, and die again, and again, now on the PC via Steam and the Nintendo Switch.
Next up we have the magnificent Truffle Pigs, a game not really about pigs or truffles, but rather a narrative walking simulator about love, discovery and the past. It's perhaps not surprising that the lead designer of the Chinese rooms Everybody's Gone to the Rapture created this game, as it features a similarly atmospheric English story, but this time without disappearing villagers. Yet, absence, loss and time are themes shared by both games. The police have taken an interest in what we're doing. As Adam, you're invited to Beth's childhood farm to help search for a local treasure, a lost earring to match one she found when she was younger. The two have grown apart and Beth's now engaged, but without giving too many spoilers away, let's just say that asking Adam along unearths more than just jewellery. Played from a first person perspective, The Magnificent Truffle Pigs is a rather relaxing affair, with you searching different fields for items using a metal detector. Audio is central to the narrative. You don't see either of the two main characters, but only hear the voices, which are performed by Arthur Dival of Doctor Who and DC's Legends of Tomorrow fame, and Lucy Fish from Safe House. Such talent helps provide a believable and immersive experience. Gameplay is not as varied and the world not as open as, say, Firewatch and What Remains of Edith Finch, but the story is well told and metal detecting is quite unique. If you fancy sniffing out truffles in a walking, talking adventure, you want to check out The Magnificent Truffle Pigs now on the PC via Steam and also the Nintendo Switch. I first played Astalon during the February Steam Game Festival and was really impressed with the retro art style and the different playable characters. Now that I've had time to play with the full release, I can safely say the game is up there with Cyber Shadow for my best 8-bit game of the year. The developers of the game have nailed the look and feel of the NES era perfectly, from the selectable CRT scan lines to the chiptune soundtrack. There are three things that I feel really make this game stand out from the crowd. The first is the plot. Plots for platformers are usually either non-existent or a convoluted mess. However, Astalon's plot engaged me from the off. It's set in a post-apocalyptic world where a demon has poisoned the water supply and the three companions must ascend the Twisted Tower of Serpents to save their homeland. Unbeknownst to the others though, Algus, one of the characters, has made a Faustian bargain with the Titan of Death, allowing them all to reincarnate every time they die. This secret pact raises the stakes somewhat and adds attention to the plot. To save everyone else, they must be sacrificed. After each death, characters can be upgraded and new items bought, making you stronger next time. I found this mechanic similar to many roguelites with permanent upgrade features, and like those games, death is more of a learning curve than a hindrance. Another thing really unique for this game are the three playable characters, Algus, Arius and Kiuli. Algus is a wizard with a wand that fires projectiles to defeat enemies and activate stone statues. Arius is a swordsman, perfect for close combat, plus his sword can cut down overgrown vines, blocking the path. Kayuli is an archer, she has a long ranged attack and can jump off walls, allowing her to reach places the other two can't. You can switch characters at campfires, which also double as save points scattered throughout the map. Unfortunately though, characters can't be switched on the fly, which often means backtracking to control the character you really need to get past a certain point. The final thing that I think makes this game stand out is the level design. Astalon is a puzzle platformer that has metroidvania elements. The game features a meticulously crafted vertical map, which reveals itself the more you play. With action taking place in a mysterious tower, you start at the bottom and work your way up. Astalon Tears of the Earth is a sizeable game, chock full of interesting areas, secrets, creative puzzles and inventive boss fights. It's a wonderful modern retro platformer that channels the original NES Metroid, Castlevania 3 and even Team Cherry's Hollow Knight. It's out now on the PC and all major consoles. Also out this week we have Hawkeye Life, a cosy life simulator many are calling the PC's answer to Animal Crossing. Step off a train and embark on a new life in Hawkeye. Complete quests, craft items and design everything in the town. Build, paint and decorate as you try to make Hawkeye more appealing and encourage more people to visit. This one launches in early access on the PC via Steam. It's a little rough around the edges in its current state but definitely one to keep an eye on over the next few months. Another game released this week in early access on Steam is Heike, a brutal precision platformer where you play as a severed head on a quest to defeat the evil Baron Norhead and retrieve your body. The game features a colour switching mechanic where you need quick reflexes to get to the end of the 80 levels currently available.
And finally, we have Stormfly, a gorgeous action adventure where you control a mechanized bug on a quest to retrieve a lost family heirloom. The game comes from the developers of the underrated pinball metroidvania Creature in the Well and is available now on the PC and all major consoles. Next week is shaping up to be a big one for indie games. To whet your appetite, I'm going to leave you with the trailer for Backbone, a post-noir adventure where you play as a raccoon private eye. After a long time in development, this one finally sees the light of day on June the 8th on PC and consoles. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Isle of Indies channel and also hit that like button to help feed the algorithm. Until next time guys, keep loving indies.